15 seconds. Bay average, day 20 seconds. Ah, shoot. Okay, hey, let's get off. Forget the camera. Day 10 seconds. seconds. What day? Push. Engine arm is that Okay, I'm going to get the pro. 99, proceeded. 3, 2, 1. Ignition. Right away, Houston. That's your good. Ag shot. Take over. over. I hear you have good thrust. 130 Houston, we're in the blind and we're go. Roger, we'd like the eggs to auto. Challenger Houston, we'd like to terminate ascent feed now. Okay. Hey Houston, uh, 540 Challenger's coming through 52K and Pink says 126 on the eight stack, we're go. Roger, Challenger, your trajectory is right on the money. Both systems are go. Okay, normal shutdown and normal okay. trim procedures. Roger, normal shutdown, normal trim. Hi, I'm Steve King, and I'd like to welcome to Advanced Photography for spring of 2016. Uh, it may appear as if I am at the Sepulveda Dam in Los Angeles, or it may appear that I'm on a screen at Cal State San Bernardino, but in fact, my physical body right now is in Norway. Last uh, January, I was fortunate enough to be able to go to Norway and to begin a project that I am in Norway right now completing. Uh, that project requires me to be in Norway on the, in the first week of April and uh, Matthew and Tom have been nice enough to allow me to take a little bit of time off, go complete that project before I actually am in class. Next week on uh, April 2nd, I will be back in class and we will be ready to go. We're going to hit everything full force. This class, Probing Photography, is a class that is kind of going to explore two or three different ideas about probing photography. The first is the idea of photography as a form of probing, examining, discovering, or exploring new worlds, new places, new things that we haven't seen before. And so we are going to metaphorically act as if we are probes, as if we are like the Juno space probe, like the Voyager space probe. <clears throat> and we're going to go out into the world and we're going to make observations, discoveries, and create impressions and ideas as we uh, go out and see these new places. The way we're going to do this is we're going to see them through field trips. So I have a series of field trips planned where we will be able to go out to different locations, mostly in the desert, and see what these places look like, discover them and investigate them using the camera or other artistic devices. In addition to uh, exploring places and really just thinking about the idea of making imagery, say, of this dam or some other place, <clears throat> we're also going to be thinking about probing photography itself. And in a, in a larger sense, really uh, probing what art is. We want to really question this. And we want to question what a photograph is, how it operates, and why it's important to us. How it communicates, and in what ways can we manipulate that communication to say the things that we really want to say. In that process, we're going to pay attention to those things that we want to say. And we're going to do that by paying attention to our perceptions, not only of the places we go, but even of ourselves and our relation between ourselves and the camera and photography. Mm -hmm. These field trips that we're gonna go on are gonna start actually on Thursday, the first, the second day that I'll be back in class. And it's gonna start with a trip to a local uh, abandoned nudist colony that's up in the hills above the college. We will uh, take uh, a hike up there and we'll do a series of um, photographs or some kind of intervention, whatever you want to do, that explore the idea of place. And we're going to try to create an image using multiple images or multiple forms of communication of what that place is. Okay, And so we're going to go up there as a group, take pictures and come back and we will have a, and then we'll all contribute to a, a kind of a group project. The following Saturday we're going to go to the city of Hinckley, the uh, 
the uh, wiped out city of Lockhart near Harper's Dry Lake and Kramer Junction to see a series of different things that all are happening out in the Mojave Desert. At, the, at Pinkley, there is a desert research center run by the Center for Land Use Institute in Culver City, and they have a series of uh, mediated events there, some photographic, some sculptural, some video, that we can go and look at. And it's, it's a very interesting place to kind of begin to think about how we can use photography and art to explore or to probe the world. We'll also go see a solar power plant, a dry lake bed that was actually used as a, a landing runway for uh, early experimental airplanes. And we'll go to Kramer Junction, which is this kind of very odd, uh, interesting little town where two highways meet out in the Mojave Desert, and there's not much else around there. Uh, after that, a couple weeks later, we're going to go to the Salton Sea. The Salton Sea, if you haven't been there, is a, is a really interesting place. It's about as far away um, from our everyday existence as you could possibly be. It's not unlike going to another planet. It is desolate. It is expansive. It is the result of a series of environmental <laughs> disasters, uh, including the... Um, collapse of a levee that controlled the Colorado River that flooded the entire valley. So it's a kind of a very odd place, it's a very interesting place, and I think a very beautiful place. It has a kind of stark empty beauty that is indicative of the desert and of a lot of the really interesting things that we can find out here. I think you'll really enjoy that. Our third field trip is going to be to Zizix. Uh, Zizix is the last word in the English English dictionary. It was made up to be the last word in the English dictionary. When you go out there on the edge of a dry soda lake, it actually feels a little bit like you're at the end of, edge of the earth. Uh, it's out near Baker, and you might have seen the exit for it uh, when you're going to Las Vegas. There's a kind of strange little sign there on the side of the road, and it just says Zizix. That's where we're going to be going. We're going to spend Friday night, Saturday night, and we'll leave Sunday morning there. You, there are places, there are dorms that we can stay in for nine dollars a night, and we have, uh, and there is a chef there who will prepare us food for uh, a very reasonable fee. Uh, and we'll do, we'll just spend lots of time doing photography in and around Zizix, and also around the uh, the, the general area of, of that part of the Mojave Desert. Our last trip will be after we return from Zizix, and we'll be to Amboy. Uh, in case you don't know what Amboy is, Amboy is a uh, kind of semi-abandoned town out on Old Route 66. This is the highway, the first highway to connect Los Angeles to Chicago. One of the main thoroughfares for getting across the country uh, before the interstate highway system developed in the 1950s. Uh, <clears throat> near Amboy are all kinds of really interesting things. There are open pit salt mines. There is a cinder cone that looks like a volcano that you can hike into. There are old abandoned 1950s era uh, gas stations and restaurants. And there is one kind of semi-functioning uh, business out there uh, at the most famous place uh, in Amboy, which is Roy's. If you, when we return to school after each field trip, we will then do a project based on the field trip. So there's going to be a lot of projects. They're going to be very quick. They're not going to be super in-depth, but as a group, it will, it will be an in-depth exploration. Uh, we were, going to be, we're going to do an in-class book project for each field trip. We'll make a little travel log and everybody will contribute pictures. But we'll also do our own individual projects as well. Um, before we go to any of these places, what we're going to do is we're actually going to research and investigate them before we go. Just like um, the Juno space probe, they do all kinds of investigations before they actually go out to Jupiter. We are going to, from our home vantage point, investigate these different places. There are two ways that we're going to investigate them. Uh, one is through Google Earth and one is through the Center for Land Use Institute's website. They have a land use database. But before we even begin any of that, I want to do a little bit investiga of investigation into some really basic things. And one of them is light itself. So there's a video that I've given you a, um, 
uh, an address for uh, in your uh, syllabus called The Limits of Light. And it's a documentary, it lasts about 50 minutes, and it really talks about what light is. And I think it's very interesting that we are using the photographic medium and we don't always know exactly what light is. And so this is a documentary that's gonna help us understand uh, what light is, how it works, and uh, maybe, maybe why it exists in the universe. I'm not quite sure. Anyways, we're using this so much, I wanna have a little back, bit of background on that. The second thing, the second video that I want you to watch is a documentary on the Juno space probe. And that documentary is uh, a very in-depth hour and 10 minute uh, documentary about uh, the probe itself and the different instruments that it's gonna carry with it and what it's going to explore and what exactly it's gonna probe about the, the uh, planet of Jupiter. Once you've watched those two videos, then I want you to go to, um, to two things. I want you to go to the Center for Land Use Institute's land-based database and I want you to look at the different areas that we will be visiting. Uh, the list is Hinkley, uh, Salton Sea, Zizix, and Amboy. And I want you to use their land use database to kind of investigate certain things out there to kind of get a feel for what's going on there. Then in addition to that, I want you to go to Google Earth and I want you to use Google Earth to look at those different places and to see if you can find anything out there uh, from a satellite point of view that you might find interesting or that you find um, kind of compelling and that I want everybody to kind of bring in what they find and if we find something that we all want to go to we can all go to that. You will also of course have the opportunity to investigate that stuff on your own. Um, after you do those two things I want us to do one project uh, during this week while I'm not in class. The project is to get images of one particular thing from two radically different points of view. And those two radical points of view, one is going to be your camera and the other is going to be Google Earth and the, um, the street view. So what I'd like you to do is on Google Earth, I'd like you to um, look at the four streets that surround the, the uh, San Bernardino City Hall. There are four streets in the block around that building. And I want you to go into Street View and I want you to move around that space, that virtual space. Um, and I want you to find something, anything, I don't care what it is, that's interesting to you, okay? I have no agenda. I don't really care what you photograph. I just want you to find something that you want to photograph. And then I want you to go out and I want you to photograph that thing. When you photograph it, I want you to think about the street view image. And I want you to make a photograph that relates to that street view image. Then we will print both of them out and we will present them in class on the 12th and we'll look at them. In addition to that, I want you to sign up for a, what's called a Panoramio account. This is a, a, a program that works in conjunction with Google Earth that allows us to take our photographs and place them into Google Earth. So if you look, when you look on Google Earth, you'll see there's all these little blue boxes. That is people who have put photographs that they've taken of that specific place out into, uh, or they put them onto Google Earth, and it allows the images to be opened up through Google Earth. So I want everybody to create a Google Earth account and a Panoramio account, and I want us to be able to place our photographs on Google Earth. So in addition to having the two prints that we'll put on the wall, I want to have the image that you take placed in or on Google Earth through the Panoramio program. That we will do with all of our projects throughout the quarter. And so every image that we produce, we're going to place on Google Earth. And that's why we'll need the Panoramio. Okay, that's a basic introduction to the class. Uh, I want everybody to kind of go out and do these research projects because on every, single, uh, on every single project that we do, every single field trip, we will research it before we go, and then we'll go out and see what's different, what's the, same of, uh, what's the same and what relates to our research, and we'll also pay close attention to what's different. And, uh, and we will kind of think about that difference between our research and our findings, and use that as a kind of uh, a way to think about photography.
Okay, I think that's a good introduction. I hope you uh, are excited about this. I, I'm very excited about this class, and I will see you all on Tuesday, April 12th. Thanks. Bob, this is Gene, and I'm on the surface. And as I take man's last step from the surface, back home, for some time to come, but we believe not too long into the future. I'd like to just let what I believe history will record that America's challenge of today has forged man's destiny of tomorrow. And as we leave the moon and Taurus Literal, we leave as we came, and God willing, as we shall return with peace and hope for all mankind. Godspeed to crew of Apollo 17.